Well, good morning, and welcome to another edition of the Bare Bones. Glad you could join me. So it's uh, Sunday morning on the 21st, and I'm finally sitting down to record this. Uh, it's been a heck of a week. Uh, I don't know if you heard on the news or not, but the uh, west coast of North America got hit by a large rainstorm, so that flooded out my basement. And as I live in a basement suite, that means that I am now homeless. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm actually uh, at a friend's place using his monitor, but my computer. Luckily, my computer was. I keep it off the ground. I keep it on uh, on a on on the table for for dust and and airflow purposes. And little did I realize it was going to save me from a foot of water. So that's why I haven't uh, done a video in a, in a week because I was actually almost done. I was done everything for this video except the narration. Uh, so that's why we are sitting where we're sitting. It was actually kind of it was actually kind of funny. Uh, here's some here's some pictures. This was a little blurry, but but uh, you get the point. Uh, I was I was in bed at 6:30 in the morning. I rolled over and the blanket felt awfully heavy because it was lying in the water. And I, you know, puzzlingly put my feet down into about seven inches of water. It ultimately came to be about a foot. Uh, and then. From there, I like run around panicked, and I tried to save what I could save. But, but uh, what you're seeing here is is a couple of I thought I threw a couple of pictures out just to show you. Uh, I had three three deep those shelves filled with books, and uh, maybe the bottom third survived. So I lost about 400 pocket novels there. Um, this is a picture of like my kitchen area. I was trying desperately to stack stuff on top of actually that. That table was, uh, I didn't get a picture of it, but it was, I had literally stacked it like four feet high with novels that did survive. What's on the floor there is my uh, comic book collection, which were under my bed. Uh, probably about 2,000 comics, maybe maybe about 100 of them survived. Uh, but essentially, I was collecting um, manga back in the 80s when I was a teenager, which ought to date me. Uh, and so my entire 80s manga collection is pretty much gone. Uh, the anime books, them, uh, the anime uh, DVDs survived, but the cases, if they were a cardboard at all, they didn't survive so much. So, so that's basically where I was the last week. And if you're a lover of manga and anime like I am, uh, that that uh, is a tragedy. But uh, anyway, so let's let's get on with what you're actually here for, which is to see the uh, my comparison of uh, Senji Grenadiers, Tertio and uh, the Zykelian Militia. And uh, I thought I would do that simply because, you know, you've got a gold unit that holds on to both uh, uh, muskets and and uh, uh, grenades, right? So, well, how does that compare to your tertiary unit, which is, of course, your premier musket unit, and your Zykelian uh, Militia, which is, of course, your only grenade unit, right? So, uh, I thought I would go forward and I would compare the rates of fire with the between the tertio and the um, uh, Shenji, and I would compare the grenades uh, with the uh, Zakelian. Now, the other thing I did is I did all lines. I'm only going to, uh, in my introduction, I'm going to show you the one line I did, but uh, in my data sets, I'm going to show you all the lines. So before we get started, let's take a look at your data stamps or your time stamps. So you can just rush ahead if you want to, to see what we've done. Okay, so as you can see, I'm going to start out with Tertio Doctrines, the Vet Lines, as a Killian Militia Doctrines, the Vet Lines, the, then I'll go into the Shenzi Doctrines, the Vet Lines. Now, the All Unit Abilities Comparison, that's where I, I pull those abilities out of uh, the, the unit cards, and I just give you the definition of what they say they do, like, you know, they take more fire damage, that kind of nonsense, right? Range Analysis, that's actually important. I actually went out and actually did, um, you know, a throw range check, and I looked at, at how that works, and I, I put that video in there. So you can see just how far you can actually get out of a, a range throw. Now the grenade damage analysis, that's where uh, I went up both Sakelian lines uh, to check the different grenade damages. And I did some, some math and calculations. I did the same with the um, Shenji as I went up both lines to see what the, the difference in the grenade damage was, right? I did that. I also did that for the musket damage as well. So I went up both lines of the Shenji for the muskets and I compare that to uh, the Tertio. Now, what you're not going to see in here is gameplay footage. I'm trying to knock some of my uh, uh, timings off these videos because they do get overly long. So uh, look for some gameplay footage in the future, except at the moment I'm doing this on my computer, but my friend's monitor because my power supply is dead. So I got a new one on order. So uh, it could be a bit spotty uh, 
even more so than the uh, last couple of uh, weeks as I had a test I had to write and stuff like that. So anyway, enough excuses, enough excuses. Let's take a look at the first thing, tertio doctrines. And here we are. So as you can see, this is my um, same tertio set that I used in my muskets video. And so you'll see I have my increase of rate of fire, I have my increase accuracy, and it turns out that the tertio are actually a, um, a little bit less accurate than the Shenju. The Shenju are actually really accurate. Uh, I then have my breakthrough doctrine and my piercing d damage uh, doctrine. So uh, this is um, because I prefer to use them as a, sh as a shooting unit as opposed to the melee line, and so this is the line I use. And as you can see, I prefer to, to, to shoot much more than I prefer the melee aspect of it. So when I compare the Shenji, um, because the, they, they have no real significant me melee, uh, I didn't bother to compare their, the melee line, obviously, because they have a grenade line. So that's why the Zekelian are here. But when we're talking tertio, we're talking basically the shooty line. Okay, so let's take a look at the Zekelians. And with the Zekelian, I, ha I had to level them to get them to a point where I could I could use the, the you know the veterancy line north and south, you know, top and bottom. But here are my Zekelian um, doctrines, and as you can see, they're absolute garbage uh, because I have never played them before. When I got them, I basically unlocked them and dumped them in a corner because the idea of grenades just never really appealed to me. So I had to go and play them, and I had to go and play them both lines uh, long enough to get uh, a feel for them. So the one doctrine I'm missing is, as you can see, the Zekelian Supply Doctrine, right? So that increases your ammo by 20%. I intend to unlock this uh, when the current season's over and I have time to do so. One, one thing that should be mentioned is when I did my grenade calculations for, you know, overall damage you can do if you throw all your grenades, I did not include, you know, if you had this particular doctrine, right? Because I, I don't know whether that 20%, whether they, they round up or down, you know, kind of thing with how many grenades you're, you're going to get in the, in the end. So I didn't know... Uh, whether I would get one or two throws extra, essentially, is what I'm saying. So that that is one thing to consider when looking at the Zekalians and, and their doctrines. So here are the uh, Shenji doctrines. Now, as you can see, again, I have the break Breakthrough doctrine. Uh, I have the Shenji doctrine that allows you to get another grenade. That's pretty useful. I also gave him the Increased Shooting Accuracy doctrine, uh, and I, I took it off my Kriegsgrat to give it to them. And I, I got another uh, increased rate of fire doctrine out of the box, so I put that on there as well. So this is going to be how my uh, Shenji are going to roll from now on. Now, the accuracy of the Shenji is, is pretty, pretty damn good. I mean, they're, they didn't need the 20% doctrine, but I thought, what the hell, more accuracy, the better, right? So that's what I gave them. Now, I am going to remove that breakthrough doctrine, possibly in the future, because of this doctrine here. Now, if you look, Shenji Doctrine 2, and it says grenade explosions will now halt enemy cavalry within 4 meters. I do have a question about the range of that. Is it, and I'm going to show you that in the range thing. It's basically, is it 4 meters within each ball that throws, or 4 meters from a central point? And again, I'm going to show you a valid reason for that. But as you can see, this is like second from the last Doctrine. I'm way over at the, at the first, second set. Uh, I unlocked them with honor. I didn't, uh, I didn't go through and do it. I unlocked them with honor. So this this doctrine is important because it will halt cavalry, but I'm having this suspicion that's not going to be as useful, and that's because you're going to see that there's a a, 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 a time, and it, you've probably noticed this already if you play these, from when you click the button to throw the grenade and when the grenade actually hit touches down, right? So if you're being charged from uh, a cavalry unit, and they hammer you, uh, you know, they hammer in at you, and you're throwing your grenade. If you don't throw a, a good chunk of distance in front of them so that they land when they get there, uh, you're going to miss, and they're going to fly over top. And and that's one thing I've noticed with even with with uh, infantry charging me. So I'm going to I'm going to show you uh, what I mean in a bit. I got a little video of where I time the actual uh, grenade throw, so you'll know exactly how many seconds you have until it lands. But you will also uh, get an appreciation for um, the fact that there is an actual delay, so you have to lead them. Uh, now, the the doctrine itself, uh, I'll probably replace breakthrough with, but again, I'm not sure just how. Uh, it depends on how good I get with them, I guess. Now, this base, this this that doctrine is essentially adding to a capability your grenades sort of already have. So, if you notice the throw grenade, it says throw 
Unit throws grenades at the target area, dealing area of effect damage and knocking down enemy soldiers. For 10 seconds after using this order, the unit's shooting speed and accuracy is increased. Using any other unit order during this period will cancel this effect. So basically, throw the grenades, and all of a sudden, your uh, your rate of fire increases. And again, I, I'm not sure exactly how much, uh, and your accuracy increases, but it already knocks down soldiers, right? So if you're getting charged by infantry, it already does that. This doctrine uh, essentially allows you to also knock down cavalry. But again, you're going to see there's a, a, a huge delay of from when you click the throw button to when the grenades actually land. So let's take a look at some unit comparison slides. We'll start with the abilities comparisons. So these are those uh, abilities that you usually see during in the description. So you can see like with Shenzhen Grenadiers, it's like precise aim, bonus accuracy, what bonus? No idea, but they are more accurate than the tertio. I did notice that while I was playing them. Exquisite armaments means you just have guns and grenades. Well, okay, fine, fair enough. Fire resistant, that's pretty good. We know that that actually does something. Again, we don't know to what percentage. The only hard number we get is a minus 25% damage penalty to heroes, which is important because obviously you want to do more damage to everybody, but you know when you're getting attacked by a hero, you're, he knows he's going to take less damage coming at you. Uh, tertio, so they have the parry up block ability, so melee attacks can be blocked while using own melee attacks, so that's pretty decent when someone gets in on you. My Tertio, tertio even though mine don't go down the melee line, they're still tanky enough that, uh, you know, I can cause uh, silver charge units uh, a, a run for their money, right? Uh, heavy recoil rail reduces the accuracy. So that's why you can you can really tell the difference between the Shenji accuracy and the Tertio accuracy, because the Shenji Right in their, their description, get a bonus to it, and the tertio get a, uh, a reduction of it. And and like I said, when you use the two, like one after the other, I put them both in the same uh, build, uh, you can really tell the difference. You can really tell that the Shenji is way more accurate, right? And they also get uh, fire resistant, and they also get the minus 20%, 25% damage to heroes. Zakelia Militia, so Hellfire, superior to other incendiaries, can burn through heavy armor. So that's important, because what that's basically saying is, you can uh, hit those, uh, you know, units like Iron Reapers and still do damage to them because they can burn through that stuff. Scorched Earth, improved Hellfire, and you have to you have to spec for it, can set light to the ground, right? No melee, no personal weapons at all, cannot fight in melee, which means that, you know, an Iron Cap Swordsman or a Militia unit gets in on you, you're going to die. So these are, are those uh, unit abilities that you, you just see as you, you open up the, the, the unit card and those are right there. Now the following slide is a bit more detailed. Now you can see uh, I've got the stat on the left, I've got Tertio, that's their musket line, then I have the Shenji musket line, and then I have the Shenji grenade line, and then of course I'm using here the Ball Boys Hellfire line for, for our comparison. Now uh, I am going to um, be more in depth uh, in a bit with the uh, grenade lines. Okay, so so what are we looking at here? So if you look, you're going to see that uh, the Tertio still obviously have the more more health and they have uh, more um, unit members and stuff like that. Uh, the leadership points, uh, right now the Shenji are a little bit better, but uh, after the season is over, they're going to be cost about five more. Um, speed, uh, the Tertio are a little slower. Uh, the Shenji musket build is 5.1 and the grenade build is 5.3. They get a little bit of a bonus in their line. And of course the ball boys are, you know, super fast at 6.2. Range, now that's interesting. Uh, the tertio range is 60, that's your basic range. But if you go up the musket line with the Shenji, you're going to go 76 meters. And this is really useful uh, when you have that extra accuracy. Uh, the Shenji grenade, of course, you, the grenade line, you drop that range, that goes away. Now, the Ball Boy's Hellfire line gets a 30 meter throw rate, right? Now, you can throw a little bit past that, but, but uh, that's their auto throw range. Now, ammo count. Tertio, again, my Tertio, get 900. The Shenji musket line gets 690. The Shenji grenade line gets 600. The Ball Boys get 36. Again, you can get that 20% uh, doctrine, but how many more are, is that going to get you for throw wise? Is it going to give you one or two? I never bothered to calculate it because I don't have one. Uh, rate of fire. This is interesting. Rate of fire of the tertio is 12 rounds a second. If you look at the Shenji muskets, full line Shenji muskets 4.83 rounds per second, full line Shenji grenades 4.83 rounds per second, 
and they're the same because there's enough points left over after you go all the way down the grenade line to go far enough up the the musket line to get the range the rate of fire bonuses now how does that equal your one-third is speed of a tertio what you actually are sitting at is the same damage output as a Kriegsgrat, a basic Kriegsgrat, not even a, a maxed out Kriegsgrat, and that's important to understand, right? So if you look at the unit DPS, and if you go watch my musket video, you'll see how I calculate all this. Uh, the unit DPS line for the tertiary is 34,176. That's how much DPS they put out, right, at 12 rounds a second. Shenji muskets, down to 18,000. Shenji grenadiers, down to 16,000. Now, that's now less than the Kriegsgrat, but it's a good 7,000 more than what a, a maxed out arc, arc investor will get you, right? So that's important when you're picking your shooty line, like whether you want to go ball in with, with muskets or muskets with balls, right? So, and we're going to get a, a better uh, look at this when I show you what the grenade stats are. Okay, so again, TTT, what the hell is that? That's, uh, if you look over to my left, that's time to throw. So for the Shenji musket, what that means, it's 1.86 seconds from the time you hit the button till the ball leaves the, the, the hand, right? And time TTH, that's time to hit. So overall, it's roughly 3.76 seconds, maybe even 3.8 uh, before the, the grenade uh, hits the max range that it can go. So you literally have a four second uh, timer before you're going to hit. So when you're when you're calculating your lead, be very aware that it's four seconds before the the, the grains hit. Now the uh, ball boys they're a little bit quicker. They're 3.5. And again, I'm going to show you a video where I calculate this. So stand by for that. Now range, throw range. Shenji muskets, 44 to 48 meters, roughly in there. And again, it's a really interesting uh, thing because when I was trying to, to find the range out, what I did and I'm going to show you this in the video, is I, uh, well, I took him into the unit training and I stood so far from an actual point where I could see their distances and discovered that when you're standing on top of them, according to the, the game, it thinks you're 11 meters away from them. So it's really, really weird. But if you get farther out, you're going to see that, that uh, uh, you're going to see that, that that accuracy comes back up. So I can, I can say for a, a bit that it's definitely 44 to 48 meters roughly in that in that zone right and then the hellfires are about 30 meters now the other line does give you extra range I think it brings you up to about 45 uh, and I'll show you where that is and I'll show you that in the grenade slide so then we go to piercing armor penetration well obviously the tertio are right up there with 37 37 and the muskets are down to 34 uh, blood armor penetration that really applies to the grenades and that's where you can see that the ball boys have 75 so um, and that's why I think you should go the hellfire line instead of the other line and again we'll, we'll get to that in the grenade damage piercing damage now you'll notice that the Shenji muskets out damage the uh, tertio by about a thousand right so they're, they're a little bit less pen but more damage so and if you add in their extra range what you have here is like a sniper unit right that's what that is um, and they like I said they'll hit stuff at 76 meters easily with that that extra 20% uh, doctrine tacked on now uh, the Shenji Grenadiers obviously they have a, uh, a piercing damage of 3322 so their piercing damage uh, goes less their armor pen is the same but their piercing damage goes down uh, and you can see the blunt damage for the Shenji muskets well that's your basic grenade damage 682 and for the Grenadiers 804 and for the ball boys Hellfire is 360 so again the Shenji grenades at first blush look better than the ball boy grenades but where the ball boys make up for it is in their uh, hellfire on the ground as a shit burns over time and I'll get to that right and then those are just the defenses and and uh, basically what I can tell you is don't take any of these units if you can possibly avoid it into melee uh, the tertio may survive a little longer but eventually they'll get wrecked too so that's that so let's take a look now at what I mean by how I have video to show how I came to those conclusions and uh, we'll start with the uh, throw timer uh, stuff that I did so I basically took them into the uh, unit training ground and I started moving around and throwing timers down right so let's take a look at that and hopefully it's coming up any second here we go okay so as you can see 
3.7 before they hit, right? So that's how long it took uh, for the rounds to actually land, and it took about 1.86 seconds for the the, the um, throw to actually happen. Now, same with the ball boys, check this out. So by the time it gets to the point, it stops at 3.53, and now the hellfire starts. Now this is in the upper tree. And, it, and basically in the upper tree it's eight seconds and I timed it just to double check and it it's eight seconds so you get eight seconds worth there now what about range let's take a look at the range now, as you can see um, the little card above the unit there it, it tells you what the range is and then as you get closer it kind of loses you know it's not accurate anymore like what? what what is this this doesn't make any fucking sense so I'm moving around trying to find where the zero is and it's, it's at this point that I realized like okay well is is each ball calculated or is it is it just a, a center line because watch it comes from the center right so maybe that means that you know it's not like the area of effect damage isn't four meters from the ball it's like a, a large circle that goes out and anything in there regardless gets the same amount of damage or is it damage per ball again i don't know there's no way, way to really check so um what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna check the range as you can see look how far that goes right how far is that? Well, we're going to take a look. I'm going to run out there and I'm going to see how far that is because I'm looking at roughly where is it and I'm going, okay, what, where is this roughly? And as you can see, 45, 46 meters somewhere in there. Now, this is the, the straight up grenade line. It is not the uh, Hellfire line. The Hellfire line is roughly about 30 meters, but this thing will throw like 45 meters. So with the, with the, with the grenade line, non-Hellfire line, you, you trade uh, damage essentially for range and extra ammo. That's that's what you're actually training. Uh, so, uh, so uh, let's take a look. What else am I doing here? You can just see them continue to throw. There's no real anything on the ground that's really burning. That's not Hellfire. That's something else. You saw the Hellfire. So Shenji. What about the Shenji? Uh, let's take a look at them again. You're going to check the range out. And I'm just trying to put them in such a place that I can get roughly the same. Uh, Roughly the same distance from where the the the, the uh, ball boy stood, right? And as you can see, I'm going around trying to find the center of it, and you can stand right in the middle, and it's giving you an incorrect uh, an incorrect uh, uh, range. But when you walk way out there, you're going to see it's about 45, 48 meters somewhere in there, right? So I turn around and I look, and then that's what I'm getting. So this is how I I, I check the range of the, uh, the grenades. I, I went into the unit training area and I just stood at the max uh, line. Now you can actually throw a little bit past that line. It's just like how uh, archers work, right? But I think that's their auto fire line. So you could probably get about, you know, 45 to 50 meters maybe, right? But that's, this is definitely the, the, the limit of the auto. So that's that. So let's actually take a look now at, at the, um, the damage calculations I did for these grenades. Okay, so you can see as I as I we look at this slide, I've got uh, my stats on the left, and then below that I've got calculations, right? So, so if you look, I got ball boy grenade, Shenji grenade, ball boy hellfire. So blunt damage from your ball boy grenade line, which is your bottom line, nine sixty. Shenji grenade here, eight oh four. Uh, Hell for hair fire 360 total blunt damage 11,520 Shinji Grenadier 12,000 ball boy hellfire 4,320 then you look at uh, total damage one throw and then you look at the ball boy hellfire one that changes it goes up to 66,528 and that's because of the damage over time if someone is foolish enough to stand in the hellfire that's how much damage they're gonna get right and then there's total damage all throws. The ball boy grenade guys, that's 57,000. The Shenji Grenadiers get 36,000. And the ball boy hellfires get almost 200,000. And, and that's because, again, the ball boy grenade guys versus the ball boy hellfire guys are trading damage for range and ammo, right? So basically, uh, they do less uh, damage, but they'll have more throws and they'll have uh, more range. So let's look at the, the calculations. Like how did, how did I calculate this? So if you look at the ball boy hellfire damage calculation from the veterans tree, top line, you're gonna see it's 216 damage times three. That is the hellfire, right? Every point 
you stick in this, it gives you 216 damage, and it lasts for 8 seconds because as you go up that line, you're going to add more and more seconds to it. And of course, there's 12 guys, so that becomes 62,208 Hellfire damage. Again, this is potential damage because there are resistances that other people get. So you're probably not going to actually do that much, but that is the potential damage you're there if you're throwing it at someone in their birthday suit. Okay, so then of course you, you've got to add in the fact that, that, that they do their initial blunt explosion damage, right? So that's 360 uh, plus 12 bases blunt, that's 4300, and then you add all that together and that's where you get your 66,528 total damage line. Add in the three throws you do and you're getting almost 200,000 potential damage. And again, this is potential damage. Okay, so the ball boy bottom line, the damage, more range, more ammo line. Because in, inside that, uh, um, inside the, the, the bottom line there, there's another 30% more ammo and there's a 10 second cooldown uh, that it has. So it, it throws them quicker as well, right? So you're trading basically total damage for the quickness of throws, more more grenades, and a better cooldown. So the damage of that, as you can see quite clearly, is 960 times 12. That gives you your throw times five throws. That's where you get your 57,600. And then I have the note here. Note the Zikalian Supply Doctrine adds another 20% ammo, but I don't have it, so can't calculate it, as I don't know whether that would be one or two more grenades, as did they round up or down, that kind of thing, right? So. Those are the things that 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 uh, I'm kind of looking at. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll get when I get it. I'll I'll, I'll calculate it. Uh, now looking at the Senji Grenadier. Now again, the Grenadier. This is your Grenadier build. You have 15 uh, troops. You got 804 blunt damage times three throws, and that's where you get your 36,000 damage. Now add into it the musket damage, right? Because that's it's the total package. So they're going to be sitting there shooting away with their 16,000 DPS muskets. And you throw on grenades, right? And they'll get three three grenades. Now, now of course, this is assuming every ball hits every target. Impossible, of course, but this is a math exercise, right? So again, the Shenji Grenadier musket build, right? Uh, it's a little less. It's you know thirty thousand total damage from the three throws, and your eighteen thousand nine hundred and seventy musket UDPS at seventy six meters. So when you're looking at your at your Shenji Grenadier, because this is obviously what this whole video is about, you basically need to ask yourself, which do I prefer? Do I prefer more grenade damage or more musket damage, right? And uh, and that's what I attempted to answer. I, I'm still not sure, to be honest. Um, I think there could be something good to be said about both lines, because that extra that extra 16 meters of range is actually pretty damn nice to have when you're shooting muskets off. And remember, their overall unit DPS is lower, but their individual shot is higher, right? So they got a better alpha, a much better alpha shot. Uh, but again, their overall rate of fire just, you know, it's it's a basic, it's a basic Kriegsgrat, right? Because even the Kriegsgrat, when, when they get uh, all the bells and whistles stuck on them, they can get up to the tertio range, right? They have half the, the, the ammo of a tertio, but, you know, you watch Kriegsgrat shooting these days, you know, a guy who has maxed out, like it's it's like watching a machine gun, but you know that's how quick Kree scratch shoot. So it's no surprise then that uh, even the purple Kree scratch unit will outshoot these guys, and that's something to, to to be cognizant of as well. If you get into a shootout with another musket unit, the only one you're going to beat is the Archibesser. Everyone else is going to outshoot you, right? Now you can outrange them if you've got the musket line, but all other musket units that are purple and above. Are going to outshoot you, so that's something to be very, very much aware of. So uh, this concludes uh, my my video. I hope you've all enjoyed it. Sorry it took so long to get it to you, uh, but I had uh, three or four days of packing and moving <laughs> all my stuff sitting in storage now. So uh, please like and subscribe, and uh, I hope to see you again. Cheers.